In this layer bit, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks for how to use VS Code effectively and efficiently as a PHP developer. Visual Studio Code is a powerful and versatile editor, but out of the box it really doesn't have a lot of support for PHP code bases. While we might not be able to make it as robust as, say, PHP Storm, we can get it close enough for a lot of use cases. So I have here a basic code base. It's a Laravel app out of the box. And while this video doesn't pertain to any one framework in particular, I work in Laravel the most, so this is what I'll be using. But all of these tips and tricks will work for any PHP framework, CMS, or just vanilla files. So we have this controller here, post controller, and this makes for a good playground to show off the tips and tricks that'll follow. The first one that we're going to install is called PHP IntelliFence. It's a package from the Visual Studio Marketplace, and if we take a look at it, it's pretty wildly popular. Now there is an alternative to this called PHP IntelliSense. It also was just as popular, but is now unpublished from the marketplace. IntelliFence is the one that's currently supported by the community and works the best with VS Code. What it does is add a suite of useful PHP features, uh, code completion, go to definition support, finding references, symbol searches, but let me show you how to install it and how it works. So if we open up VS Code again, and we go to our extensions area, we can type in PHP IntelliFence and click install. And once installed, it should be good to go. You don't have to restart or anything. Depending on your code base size, it may take some time to actually index your entire code, in which case you'll see it here at the bottom uh, next to the problems area if you have the status bar open. Ours isn't indexing anymore, which means that we should be able to use all the features right now. So if we go back to our code, open up our post controller again, we can do something like this. So if we take an array, we should now be able to do something like in array, and we can get a definition of what that function does, the arguments that are needed for it, as well as the types associated with each of those arguments, and sometimes a basic description of what it does. So we can say an array uh, needle, let's do my posts is in posts, and that returns a Boolean, so we can do is in posts equals, and there we go. And now this is, you see our is in post is grayed out because that variable is not used in any code further down the line. But if we did something like a comparison on it, if is in post, you can see it lights up there. And we also get a basic error handling if we mix something up in a PHP function. So if we remove this second argument here, we get a squiggly red line. And if we hover over it, it's expecting two arguments, but it only found one. We could view the problem and it just highlights that in a brighter area. We also have go to definitions. So if we do something like public posts here at the top and create a constructor, and then we reference that somewhere down the line, We can press Control or Command if you're on Mac and hover over the posts. We then see a definition for that property and clicking on it highlights it at its start. One more useful feature about IntelliFence is that it also does code completion and intelligence for embedded HTML, CSS, or JavaScript inside of PHP files. So if we were to open up something like a view file, which ends in PHP, you can see that it's already picking up something. And if we go to focus problems in VS Code, we have one notice that says property is ignored due to the display with display block. And if we double click on this, it automatically highlights this problem. So we could get rid of it and solve the issue. It also has completion as well. So if we added in a line here like form, we have it pre-populated with the action, and it will even do suggestions for things like the method or ink type. And adding a button, we can see the JavaScript completion.
And we can see that we even highlight this error here because we added in an extra parenthesis. All right, the next package that we're going to install is for Composer. So if we open up the extensions and search for Composer, we want this third one right here, Composer Companion. Now you might be thinking, why not use the one that has way more downloads? I've used it before and there's a lot of problems with it. Uh, the require commands don't really work. There's really not a whole lot of added functionality that you couldn't just do in your command line. And it seems to be kind of broken at the moment. So I found this one as a replacement and it seems to work beautifully. So we'll install it here. And go back to our application. And before we can use it, we'll have to set a couple of settings. So let's go to our settings JSON. And at the bottom, we'll use composer, companion, enabled is true, and composer companion, executable path to the path of our composer executable. Which if you need to find that, we can just open up a terminal and type which composer. So that is user local bin composer. And now back to our application, we have a new window here at the bottom called composer scripts. And we can directly run scripts that are in our composer file by clicking this play button here next to each one of them. I don't need to do that right now, but what I would like to do is add a new package to my application. If I open up the command line and type in composer, we now have a whole list of commands that we can use at our disposal without having to open up a new terminal window. So I can go to require, and it'll ask me for a vendor and a package, as well as a version, which is optional. Let's do fruitcake Laravel cores. And it'll ask me for any additional options. I don't want any of these, so I can just hit enter. And it ran the command right in my terminal. So it added the package. It ran the post autoload dump script. And you can see there now, it is discovered and in my application. All right. Let's try that one more time. Let's try clear cache. And it cleared it immediately. Okay, so that's a composer package. Let's go on to another one. For the third tip, I'm going to use a package called PHP namespace resolver. If we take a look at it in the marketplace, it has quite a lot of installs, and you'll see why shortly. This makes it really easy to add namespaces into your application, and it has a variety of commands that we can use, which come in handy. All right, let's install it. So show our extensions again, and PHP namespace, this first one here, and after it's installed, we can start using it immediately. So let's head back to our application. And let's say I wanted to use the user model here. So I could say user, and it will automatically find my app models user. And if I click that, it added in the namespace use statement up here automatically. Now, what if I had another couple of models? Let's say a post and a comment. Let me just create those real quick. And we'll add these to our test method, users. And each time that I hover over one of these models, whenever I start typing it, it adds the namespace at the top of my application. So we have comment, post, and user. And it also adds them in alphabetically. But if we wanted to, we could reorganize these. Using the commands, we could say sort imports, which now sorts them by length and then alphabetical. So because post and user are the same length, post comes first and user comes second. We can also highlight each of the ones that aren't used. So if we remove this post call here, and we said highlight not use classes, both the post and the request class are highlighted until we go to use them. All right, this tip was pretty short, as is the next one. We're going to use something called PHP Constructor. Let's open up our extensions and find PHP Constructor and install it. 
Now this one really only does one thing, but it does it pretty well, and it saves some time. Let's open up our post controller again, and in the command line, let's type in constructor. And you'll see this command, insert constructor property. If we hit that, it now adds in and pre-populates a protected property, as well as a constructor for the class. It also has all of the property variables highlighted, so we can easily replace them all at once. So if we wanted to, we could do something like this and replace them all with users. So now we have a protected property called users and it's initialized each time that the class is called. By default, it uses the protected attribute, but in the settings, we could change it if we wanted to. So if we start typing constructor, we can see PHP constructor, choose property visibility, which means that we can pick it each time. Or if we wanted to set it as something automatically, we could choose visibility and have it be either private, protected, or public. I want to choose it each time, so I'm going to keep this attribute true. Now if we go back and run that same command again, it tacks it on to the same construct method. So now we can say posts. Protected was highlighted, so it should be able to be edited out, but I believe because I'm using my Vim extension here, it didn't work out as well as I intended it to. So for now, I think I'm actually going to change my settings and have this set all the properties immediately to public. Okay, so using it once more, we see that the property is automatically public and I can change this to comments. So with one simple command ran three times, I now have a constructor with three separate attributes being initialized and set pretty easily. I think I'll do one more tip. And for the last one, it's something that's going to be pretty useful. Chances are, if you use PHP pretty regularly, you'll have come across Xdebug. It's a powerful debugger tool and one that has native integration to most PHP IDEs. It doesn't out of the box in VS Code, but with a simple extension and some configuration, we can make that happen. So in the extensions window, let's get started with that. Xdebug. And we want this PHP debug debug support for PHP with Xdebug extension. All right, once it's installed, we can go ahead and get started setting it up. So let's head back to our application and open up something like our post controller. In our index method, we're going to remove this and this, and we'll just add some cruft code here so it has something to step over. Let's say test array is an array with, uh, I don't know, some fruit in it. Banana, pineapple, cherry, orange, and then we'll say, uh, uh, we'll say vegetable is uh, carrots and is fruit equals in array vegetable test array. And actually for posterity's sake, let's call these fruits and this test array we'll call fruits again. And then at the bottom, we'll just spit out his fruit. Okay. And we'll get rid of this user's call too. Okay. So now we can set breakpoints in our code on the sidebar when we hover over using these little red dots. So let's set one right at our fruits array. And opening up the command line, and let's say debug PHP. Now that'll bring up this entire debug setup here and kind of take over our IDE right now. So we have nothing running right now, we have nothing going on. And I have this index method mapped to slash posts. So let's visit it in our browser. Okay, well, nothing happened. Let's actually make sure that we're seeing what we should be here. Let's say is fruit, and let's make it conditional. Is a fruit is not a uh, fruit. That way we at least see something back in our web browser. Okay, it's not a fruit. 
but we're also not seeing our breakpoint hit. Now I have xdebug running as an extension in my local PHP environment, but I need to connect that to VS Code in order to make that breakpoint known and stop the code execution there. All I have to do is click this play button here next to listen for xdebug, and it will start the launcher. So if I go into my browser and hit refresh, my breakpoint got hit, and we have all of the variables stored out here, as well as a call stack for the breakpoint. And now we can step over our code to go to the next line and see that our fruits variable now has these four values in it. And we can step over again. Is vegetable or vegetable is a carrot. Step over one more time. Is fruit is false. And we can continue stepping over and stepping over and viewing the call stack. And we can also stop execution. And everything goes back to the way that it was before. We can remove the breakpoint. And we can also, if we add in multiple breakpoints, we can see them all at the bottom of this window here. So we can see that this is at line 11 of post controller. This is at line 21 of post controller. We can even open up different files and add in breakpoints in them as well and see them all listed out here. And then clicking the numbers will highlight the line for the file that it's associated with. And we can just remove them all here if we wanted to. One quick caveat is that my setup for this is a little different because I'm running my local environment through Docker. If I go to this gear here, it opens up a launch.json file, which allows you to set the configuration for each of the X debug profiles that are in this dropdown. I'm only using this top one, listen for X debug. And on my environment, I have to add this path mappings here from var www.html to the workspace folder. And this host name set to localhost. Other than that, everything else remains the same. All right, I think that's it. I use VS Code for the bulk of my day to day PHP work, and it's all possible because of these packages. If you have something that you use to make PHP development easier with VS Code, be sure to let me know in the comments.